Welcome to the Holistic Success Show. I'm Elizabeth Lozano. And I'm Dr. Robert Puff. Today we're going to have a guest coming on talking about different aspects of holistic health. We're going to be answering a viewer's question about what it means to live in the present moment. And a second question about meditation and how you can use it in your life. And Dr. Puff will be discussing about the importance of boundaries as well as how to get used to being healthy. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope you enjoy the show. Today I want to talk about boundaries. Boundaries have to do with what we set up between us and other people so that they don't hurt us and that we don't hurt them. And everyone gets that. When someone treats you poorly, you say stop, stop doing that. And then that way hopefully they'll stop. And if they don't stop doing that, you stop hanging out with them. So you want to make sure that if people are harmful to you or if you're struggling being harmful with another person, you say this needs to stop. You put a wall there so it doesn't continue. The wall can manifest in many ways. I could talk about this, the whole episode about how to set up boundaries, and we'll continue to have more dialogues about this, Elizabeth and I, over the time to come. But today I want to talk about what about boundaries with family? I mean, it's one thing to have a friend saying, you know, you're not a good friend anymore, so I'm not going to hang out with you anymore. But let's say you need to set up a boundary with a family member, someone that you love, someone that's going to be in your life. What do you do there? If they, what, the first thing you do is you obviously tell them, stop doing this, this is hurting my feelings, is that your intent? And then they may say yes, no, or they may just continue to do it. So what do you do when they're really difficult? What do you do when you have a family member that continues to hurt you and you need stricter boundaries? What you do is you always love them. You never give up on family members. I really believe that. You know, if someone is close to you, I mean like a brother, a parent, a sibling, or a child, I think that, that nuclear you, get, you never give up on them. However, you do set boundaries. So what you do is when they're misbehaving, you do say, I'm not going to put up with this anymore. I mean, that may be you tell them first how they're hurting your feelings or what they're doing that make you feel a certain way. And then again, they may respond positively to that, but they may not spawn, respond well to that. So then you set up more stricter boundaries. And you may say, you know, if you don't stop this, you know, we're going to bring someone else in here to talk about this, to resolve this. If that doesn't work, then you come up with stricter boundaries. You may say, hey, you know, this really is hurting my feelings. I've talked about this over and over again. And if this doesn't continue, you know, I can't have you in my life as much. Or when I visit you, I'm only going to stay here till you hurt my feelings. So if you're with someone that you love and they hurt your feelings, you actually leave. You visit them again. The difference is with a friend, you may never see them again. But with someone that you love, you just keep going back. And I think in the most intense case, and I have told many people this, advice this to many people over the years, let's say someone that you love ends up in prison because they have done really bad things in your life or you don't see them. What you do is you continue to reach out and love them. If they're in prison, you visit them. If they're at, you know, if there's some place that is far away, you find them and you send them letters and you reach out to them and you keep loving them. You have very strict boundaries so they can't hurt you but you never, never give up on loved ones. I think that's the key there. Love people in your life, but set up boundaries. And the ones that are close to you, you never stop loving them, but you also set boundaries. And the boundaries can be very strict, but always let them know, whether through a card, through a phone call, even if they don't respond back, that you love them and you're glad that they're in your life. Peace. Our first question this week comes to us from Chen in Hong Kong. Can you explain what living in the present means? I've heard about this concept, but don't quite understand it. What happens to us is that all day long, there are thoughts going in our mind. We're thinking about what's going to happen. We're analyzing what is happening. We're thinking about what did happen. And what we're not doing is living in the present moment. We're not being totally present with what's happening here right now. So because of all this egoic, I call it egoic thinking, it keeps us from really living fully and richly because when you're in your mind, you're really not being present with what is. So you may be with someone and kind of half listening because your thoughts go other places. You may be having a really 
nice meal, but you're sort of not even enjoying it because your thoughts are going elsewhere. You may be watching a show, even our show, and may think about something else, and your thoughts go elsewhere. So you're never here, right here, right now. So living in the present moment is really being 100% present with what's happening right now. And what you'll find is that when you do that, your life really becomes rich, it becomes full, and it becomes a really awesome experience. But what you have to do is let go of the future, let go of the past, and live in the now. And I think the truth is, is that you miss so much when you don't live in the present moment. I have seen relationships affected, oh, far none, even relationships in my own life where people have a hard time because they're thinking about other things. And people can tell that. And you miss so much of everything, the relationships, you miss the beautiful flowers and the butterflies that go by and maybe a friendly face that says hello. Even those people that are looking for relationships, sometimes if you're so in your head worried about, oh, I'm gonna be alone forever, I'm never gonna have a relationship, your head isn't up enough to even see the faces around you or somebody that you might miss in passing. So when we're so stuck in the future, because I want this, or so stuck in the, in the past of, oh, I can't believe that that happened, or I wish that I was there again, you miss everything in the now. So be here now. That is the best advice that both of us can give to you. And one last thing you can do is continue to watch our show. We're trying to teach people around the world how to live in the present moment. There's a lot of great guests we have on and things we talk about. So come back, watch, and grow with us. Thank you for your question. I'd like to welcome Dr. Saram Khalsa to the show. He is a board certified in internal medicine and in 2007 was voted by his peers to be one of the best doctors in America. He's also one of the founding members of American Holistic Association and American Academy of Medical Acupuncture. So thank you so much for being a guest on thank our show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be yeah. here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about some of these organizations that you started before we get started on your book, by the way, that he also wrote was The Vitamin D Revolution. So why don't you tell us a little bit about those first? Yes, the American... Uh, the Holistic Medical Association was founded over 30 years ago for doctors at that time who were beginning to integrate additional modalities of treatment to their traditional practice of medicine. So when I opened my practice in the late 70s, I began to use acupuncture, homeopathy, diet, uh, the role of diet and nutritional supplements. And at that time, this organization was a startup organization which now has thousands of members all over the country. Similarly for acupuncture, I began doing acupuncture in the late 70s and an American Academy of Medical Acupuncture was founded about in the late 80s and it is now a very active organization for medical doctors who do acupuncture all over our country. Wow. Can you talk just for a second about the importance of uh, holistic health versus, you know, the medical, the yes. traditional medical model? Yes. Really, our, our, our health care system at this time is really a disease care system, unfortunately. And integrative medicine, which is what we call what I practice now, is really about bringing additional modalities such as diet, lifestyle, vitamins, herbs, homeopathy, acupuncture, to help us be in a proactive state of well-being mm -hmm. rather than just waiting for a disease to be treated. So um, even people who come to me who have diseases, we use these natural modalities to help the increase their well-being mm -hmm. and to therefore help the basic nature of whatever disease they're coming with. Which ties in with this, which I got a chance to watch this DVD that you have, which was absolutely fabulous Thank and so you. informative. And I want you, you to share everything with our audience about why you created this and what it's all about. Yes. The reason that I created the book originally is because we have two epidemics going on in our society right now. Number one, we have an epidemic of vitamin D deficiency. It's estimated that worldwide, over a billion people are deficient in vitamin D. And in our country, at least 40 to 50% of adults, and just recently published in the medical journals, 70% of American children are insufficient in vitamin D. Which, what does that mean exactly when somebody's deficient? What are the consequences of such yes, things? Yes, and that's the second part of the epidemic, which is that there's a deficiency of knowledge about vitamin mm, D. Absolutely. And people don't understand the importance of vitamin D. And it's because of these two epidemics that I wrote this book and subsequently the DVD to really serve as a way to educate people about the importance of vitamin D. 
You see, the government is behind in its recommendations. Really, we're kind of stuck in the rickets era. We all know that vitamin D is associated, vitamin D deficiency is associated with rickets. Can which you is, explain a little bit about what rickets is exactly? Absolutely. Rickets is a disease that children get when they're deficient in vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And so it's a softening of the bones, a weakening of the bones. And that's all we learned many years ago which, in medical school. Which that could be quite dangerous, I would imagine, Yes, for it can. And therefore, the government has put the recommended daily allowance of vitamin D at about 400 units for adults because that will prevent rickets. Mm -hmm. But this is about 10 years behind in information because in the late 90s, we came to learn that vitamin D in a higher dose can help us protect us from many of the chronic diseases of our current society. <clears throat> vitamin D deficiency is associated with 17 types of cancer, mm -hmm. heart disease, heart attack, high blood pressure, osteoporosis, chronic pain. It's being associated now with this epidemic of autism as well as childhood asthma. And di diabetes And diabetes as well, right? as well. So what we now know is that yes, 400 units for an adult will prevent rickets, but higher doses now are associated with lower incidence of these diseases. Wow. Now, am I saying that if you take vitamin D, you're never going to get cancer? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is study after study has continually showed us that people with higher levels are less likely to get these diseases. And I know from viewing your DVD as well that people that are recovering from such things as breast cancer or some of these other um, diseases that you talked about, if they have increased dosages of vitamin D, their, their potential for healing is increased. Is that correct? Yes. I'm going Somewhat? to reword that okay. a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I don't want your audience to go away thinking that I'm saying vitamin D treats breast cancer. Yeah. But the studies such so, so far, as I point out in my book and in the DVD, are based on epidemiology, based on retrospective studies, and a few prospective studies. Mm -hmm. The gold standard for medicine, of course, is the double-blind crossover placebo-controlled trial. And those types of studies are now just getting started. Okay. But those studies take five to ten years wow. to bring their data to us and prove what the associational studies and the epidemiologic studies clearly show that people with higher levels are less likely to get diseases. Mm -hmm. So there's an argument among some of my very conventional colleagues. Nobody should take vitamin D yet in higher doses because the double-blind studies are not completed. Okay. My position on that is there's no harm in taking a higher dose of vitamin D and raising your levels to, safe le to, to more optimal levels. The worst that will happen is in five to ten years when the studies are published and it shows no benefit, you won't have hurt yourself. Okay. But the best that could happen is you may be protecting yourself from many of these chronic degenerative diseases. And that is an important thing too because uh, I don't know if many of you have heard on some of my other on our episodes or you will learn is that I do suffer from back issues and one of the things that they said is I have a degenerative disc problem. and so. I, that's something you have a blood test, a blood kit that you can send because that's one of the things that you recommend is people go to their doctor and get a blood test. They don't just jump out and say, okay, I need this much. And I think yes. that's a really important thing that you said. And that's one thing I'm going to do <laughs> So because yes. I think that's really important. And I myself would like to look into that to see because, and I will let you know what the results are of That'd that. Be great. I think that's we important. We can have a follow up. Yes, yes. Yes. In our, it would be best for a person to go to a doc, their own doctor and get a blood test. But given our healthcare system right now with people not having doctors or not having insurance, I discovered that there was a way to make available to people to do at home mm -hmm. their own blood test. Now it's not like a pregnancy test where you get an answer right away, but you poke your finger, you put a drop of your blood on the blotter, let it dry, mail it to the lab, and then in about 10 days you get your answer back. And you can bring that in the best of all worlds to your doctor to decide what to do. Uh, and in the last chapter of my book I describe how I in my practice correct people's vitamin D deficiency and bring them to optimal levels. Now I know we often hear about vitamin D and getting that from the sun. Can you talk a little bit about how that maybe you're not getting everything you need from yes, that? Yes, yes, thank you. The human body is an amazing organism. If an, if an adult woman such as yourself, who's, who's got fair skin, goes out with shorts and short sleeves in the summertime for about 15 minutes, you will get about 10,000 units of vitamin D in about a half an hour, 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. So that's the way we're supposed to get it. The uh -huh. good Lord made it that we're supposed to get it that way. But now most all of us are wearing sunblock. 
And the amazing thing is that if the sunblock has a, a sun protection factor, SPF, greater than 15 to prevent sunburn, it will also block 99% of the vitamin D making rays of the sun. Wow. So if we want to hear more about the work that you do and find out more of this really amazing information, and I really recommend this because I think it was, it, was, it was really informative for me, where can we get a hold of you? Yes. You, you can get a hold of me from my website, drsaram.com, and you can click at the very top under the Vitamin D Revolution. It'll take you to the whole section of my website that talks about vitamin D and the book and the test kits and the DVD. Well, thank you so much for being a guest thank on our show. Thank you for having me. It's thank a pleasure. You. The other morning, I got up and I got on the internet and was looking at my Facebook account. My friends were on there. And an old friend I knew from college posted something. He said he had gone to the market, and when he came home, he had purchased milk. And when he came home, he put it in the fridge. But the next morning when he drank it, he, he said it tasted terrible. And he looked at it, and it was non-fat milk instead of low-fat milk. And he wrote, oh, this stuff is disgusting. And I wrote back to him saying, well, you get used to it, and it's better for you. You know, just kind of as a remark back to him. But I think there was a really good story in that. Whatever we are used to, we are used to. So if you get used to drinking low-fat milk and then switch to non-fat milk, it's going to taste disgusting to you. If you're used to doing something unhealthy for yourself, like let's say you um, never exercise and then you start exercising, it's not going to feel very good. Whenever you make any change, that change creates, in a sense, suffering. But in that suffering, bring the change that comes out of that is good. It's like as you change your body, as you change your habits, which your show is all about, you will get better. But the hard part is that initial change. When you do something different, your first reaction to it is going to be like to my friend, yuck. <laughs> so what I want to encourage you is saying, all right, it is true that initially, whatever episode you're watching and whatever you decide to implement into your life that we're teaching you here at the Holistic Success Show, Initially, you're not going to like it. Like, let's say you try meditation. I hear meditation is really good. Elizabeth and Dr. Puff really advocate meditation. So you try it, and it's just not a very good experience. Try it again. Try it again. And guess what? You'll reach a point where you will really like it. You'll get used to it, and you'll like it. Same thing with exercise. If you haven't been exercising, and you take our suggestion and start walking every day. Just walk a little bit. What you'll fi find is you will get used to that. As much as it may be difficult for you, to not walk is as difficult, or to walk, it's as difficult for me to walk. So whatever you get used to, you really do get used to it. So why not start cultivating habits that are good for you, that make you feel good inside, instead of habits that are bad for you and make you feel bad inside, that have bad karma to them, if I can use that word. Cultivate habits that are good for you, but realize when you change that it will be difficult at first. It will make you, you might say, yuck. But you will get used to it. Whatever it is, you really will get used to it. So I encourage you to, as you progress forward in your holistic health journey, choose those things that are healthy for you. Hang in there because you will get used to it. And what used to be yucky will taste great. Peace. Our second question this week comes to us from Anupama in Goa, India. I've read many books on meditation. There are so many types and philosophies which make it hard to choose. What do you suggest? Well, after meditating for 30 years, I suggest one thing to almost everybody. Find out what works for you best right now. Try different things and then say, huh, what resonates with you? What's working best for you? You are correct. There are an infinite number of forms of meditation. And if you explore them, you say, well, that's working for me then go ahead and go with that. If that one, you try another one and it's not working for you, then don't go with that. And the key is to what I also found over my years of meditation, it changed with me. Sometimes I would try this type. I might like really enjoy guided meditations. Then I would do a breath meditation. Then I would do, I did mantras for years where I just said a, a word or phrase that I kept repeating over and over again that went with my breath. But the variety I think is good to learn them and then choose one. Choose one that works and then kind of stick with it. Don't be jumping too much. I think if you go from one to another to another every day, it won't work very well. So pick one that says, this seems like it works pretty well for me and then stay with it for a while at least, a while being you know like six months or something. And then really what you'll find is you'll get grounded in it, you'll get better at it and you'll go to a deeper place. So find really what works for you and then go with that because 
we do change, we go in different places, but if you explore what works for you, make it individualized, personalized, what you'll find is what you need right now will present itself to you, and then you can go to that very deep, magical, wonderful place of meditation. Dr. Puff had mentioned a very important word, explore. Explore what the possibilities are for you. There's so many different types, and if we just brush the surface, it's kind of hard to tell, and it kind of can be inundating. But if you just look into it a little bit deeper, maybe you can find a group or other people that you can meditate with, because that can be very powerful at first as well. Um, even in some classes of yoga, they do it at the end. Um, there's a form of meditation that they do, and that can be helpful as well as doing it with other people. Um, buy some books or CDs. Or there's, there's even free ones, such as our meditation for health podcast that we do some several different ones both with Dr. Puff leading it and also with myself leading it and I really encourage you the only way you're going to be able to figure out what you really like is if you try the different ones you might find that this works for you and this one doesn't or maybe this one works for you for a while and then it changes but whatever works for you just explore and find it and you'll feel it and you'll know and as you try ours out too, t let us know what works for you. Let us know, hey, we want more of this. Mm -hmm. We want something like different than that. I think then we can work together in creating something really great for you because there's we've both been studying meditation for years and that way we can present what works best for you and give you a variety of experiences so that you can continue to develop your meditation experience. And we really would love to hear from you. So thank you so much for your question. This week's quote is by R. Buckminster Fuller, and the quote is, Dare to be naive. How wonderful would it be if we all went through life seeing the world like a child with fresh, new eyes. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Holistic Success Show. If you didn't know, we also have a Meditation for Health podcast available on our website and iTunes. And if you have an organization or a company that would like to have Elizabeth and I come give a talk, we'd love to. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you have a wonderful week.